What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about adding collision and gravity forces to a Niagara article system. If you're new to Niagara or looking just to level up your skills, this is a great video for you. So let's start in and we'll move step by step on how to create this Niagara system. To get started in our content drawer, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and create a new Niagara system. So I'm going to use the fountain base. So I'm going to type fountain into the search bar up here. I'm going to click this and I'll hit create. I'll call this NS underscore gravity collision particles. All right. So I am going to put this up at the top. So we see immediately we have a little sort of fountain. We're going to change that and we are going to delete our add velocity in cone. We're going to change our shape location to a disc. And we see immediately that our gravity force is active. So in most empty particle systems, gravity force is not present. So if you use something like a hanging particulate, it's not present. But what you're going to do is if you don't have gravity, you're going to go to the particle update section, which is the section that it's calling all of these actions per frame per particle. So if you say something like change color and you want it to shift from a red to a white or a blue to a yellow, that's where this is going to happen. This is where things like force happen, where scaling happens, where material changes happen. That's all happening in the particle update section. So I'm going to type this, uh, I'm going to click this plus sign here and I will type gravity force. Again, we'll start to see now this gravity force acting on our particle. So I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna drop this into my environment and I can start to see this behavior start to look very similar to what I have over here on the left. So let's add a different color just to differentiate it. I'm gonna type uh, uh, scale color. I lied, I'm actually gonna type just color. Uh, and then I'm gonna click uh, over here on the right, this little down carrot. I'm gonna use a suggested modifier of color from curve. And then I'm gonna hit this little tab in the top left, and this is going to allow me to create a color gradient. So now we'll see it transition from red to white over the lifetime of the particle, and I'll hit okay. I'll hit save, I'll go just poke my head over to my map. Now we can see it goes from red in the beginning to white in the end as it falls towards the ground. So if I zoom out, I can see or just fly below ground. It is going below the floor surface, which we wouldn't really want. So let's add some collision to make this a little more realistic. So under particle update, I'm going to press the plus sign and I'm going to type collision. Amazing. So we won't really see anything reflected in this viewport. But if we go back to our level, we'll immediately start to see the particles bounce off the floor uh, and then sort of disappear in space. So this over here to me looks a little bit better because, you know, maybe this particle isn't super bouncy like a bouncy ball as this one appears. So what we can do is back in our particle system under collision in particle update, what we can do is change the bounce factor. So under the bounce section, this top variable, uh, it's called restitution, and if you read the tooltip here, it says that it controls the bounce coefficient. So by default, something like 0.6. In this situation, let's try changing it to something like 0.2. Um, I'll save, I'll go back to my map, and immediately I can start to see the momentum of these die. So it looks something more like a magnet, that, or a, a marble, than a, um, than a bouncy ball. So right now we kind of see it because the velocity is going straight down. We don't see very realistic action. So uh, well, let's just add a curl noise force. So under particle update, I'm gonna press plus and I will type curl noise force. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change the strength to 50 and I'm gonna change the frequency to 0.02. I'll also go down here and say pan noise field and make this pan for a little more dynamic moving uh, noise. 
And then once I go into my level, I'll start to see this moving around a little bit. And so from a top down, we can see the particles the as they fall down in space are moving a little bit side to side. So as they hit the ground, they have a little bit of directional momentum. And even if we wanted to, you know, let's say, add a velocity in, let's guess, 200 in the Y. So now we can see it's sort of blowing one directionally. And actually, let's do 500. Boom. So now we see it's like kind of shooting out in one direction. We can see the particles start to slide along the floor. I'm going to delete this one in the back. You can start to see them slide along the floor and what in a game is a totally plausible particle collision, uh, you know, movement. So it's awesome. It slides across the ground. I'm not going to go super, super deep into all of the values in here, but you know, tune these as you please. Things like friction are what's going to change the amount in which it slides across the ground. So right now we're getting like a pretty nice slide for what this particle could be. But if you were to say no friction, for instance, zero, um, let's just again, the friction coefficient determines how quickly a particle will slow down. So zero means it's basically just retaining momentum uh, and not losing momentum from friction. And so if we go even further, you know, restitution, let's see, one, boing. So restitution, bounciness, friction, slidiness, very technical terms. Um, so let's just put this back, but that is all for today's tutorial. Again, just the basics into collision and gravity and how they can be used. Uh, one quick note about gravity. Uh, you are just going to enter a vector value. So if you wanted zero gravity, um, you would do opposite 980. Um, and let's delete this velocity. Oh, now it flies up. So again, uh, gravity is a vector and then collision can just be controlled using a lot of useful, uh, floats and values within this module. And that is all for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. And to learn more about Niagara and Unreal Engine 5, stay tuned.